model capabilities are actually like quite stunning. It's capable of automating any white collar job by like 27, 28. Meet Sholto Douglas, an AI researcher at Anthropic, deep in the trenches of scaling up reinforcement learning. And if what he's saying sounds like something out of a sci-fi novel, you're not alone. In just the last few days, some of the biggest names in AI have echoed the same startling prediction. White-collar work as we know it is on the verge of total collapse, possibly within this decade. And here's the kicker. Nobody's ready, not corporations, not governments. Definitely not the average person caught in the crossfire of this seismic shift. So today we're pulling back the curtain. We'll be hearing directly from the top minds inside the AI labs, the ones building the future, about what's coming, why it's happening faster than anyone expected, and most importantly, what we can do to prepare. Let's kick things off with Sholto Douglas. He was recently asked a simple but huge question. What kind of impact will these next generation AI models have on global GDP over the next few years? Spoiler alert, his answer, not just big, potentially earth shattering. But before we dive deeper, quick favor, if you want to stay ahead of the curve on all things AI and tech, Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss an update. All right, let's hear what he had to say. I think probably the, the initial impact looks something like China as an emergence. Um, because there's, there's going to be like... Which is the thing that has probably most impacted world GDP is, in the last right. 100 years? Um, <laughs> like, you know, and you look at like Shanghai over like the course of 20 years and like dramatically transforms like, you know. Um, but and I, this will be like dramatically faster than that. But you'll see that. But... There's important distinctions to be made here. One is that I think we're near guaranteed at this point to have effectively models that are capable of automating any white collar job um, by like 27, 28, and, or near guaranteed end of decade. That being said, that's because we have, uh, like those, are, those tasks are quite susceptible to our current, current suite of algorithms. Like, you know, you can try things on computers many times. You can, uh, there's like a you know, wealth of data available for this. Um, they don't, you know, the internet exists, but that same resource of data doesn't exist for say robotics yeah. or for biology. And so for a model to be a superhuman coder, you just need the affordances, which we've already been able to give the models. And you need to sort of like take the existing algorithms and, and like scale it up. For a model to be a superhuman biological researcher, you need automated like laboratories where it's able to propose and run experiments in a hugely paralyzable way. Or for it to become as competent in the real world as we are, you need it to be able to act in the environment through robotics. And so you need a hell of a lot of robots for yeah. it to actually like collect the data and, and do that in, in a way that unlimits. So one um, mismatch that I think we might see, and I'm, I'm actually also worried about us seeing, is you'll see uh, a huge impact on white collar work. Um, and whether that looks like just dramatic augmentation, uh, you know, like TBD, but uh, you will see that world change a lot, uh, and we'll need to pull forward the uh, like the dramatic transformation of things that make our lives a hell of a lot better. So to pull forward medicine, to pull forward abundance in the real world, we need to like actually figure out the you know the cloud laboratories and the robotics and this kind of stuff. So that's the timeline, and it's already insane. But here, where things get truly mind blowing. In another interview, this time alongside his colleague Trenton Bricken, who leads mechanistic interpretability research at Anthropic, Sholto drops a bombshell. We don't even need new AI models to trigger this massive shift. You heard that right. With the systems we already have today, yes, the ones currently in use, if companies had the right infrastructure, tools, and access to enough data, they could start automating nearly every white-collar job. Right now. No futuristic breakthroughs required. No waiting for GPT-5 or some next-gen model. This isn't speculative. It's possible today. Let that sink in. These aren't just theories being tossed around in darkened labs. We're talking about real-world capabilities that could completely reshape the workforce and fast. Let's keep going. Here, what happens when we take this idea even further? Just to make it explicit, because we've been touching on it here, even if AI progress totally stalls, you think that the models yes. are really spiky and they don't have general intelligence, yes. it's so economically valuable and sufficiently easy to collect data yes. on all of these different jobs, these white collar job tasks, yes. such that to Shalto's point, we will, we should expect to see them automated within the next five years. Yeah. 
Like Even we, if you need to hand world. spoon every single task yes. to the model. It's like economically worthwhile to do so. Even if like algorithmic like progress stalls out and like we just never figure out how to like keep progress going, which I don't think is the case. Like it, that hasn't stalled out yet, it seems to be going great. Um, the current suite of algorithms are sufficient to automate white collar work provided you have enough of the right kinds of data. Yes. And in a way that like compared to the TAM of salaries for all of those kinds of work is so like trivially worthwhile. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Now you might be thinking, okay, but these are just predictions, just words. And sure, that would be one thing if they were coming from armchair theorists or sci-fi writers. But we're talking about the people inside the labs, the ones building this technology firsthand. And here's the most critical part of what they're saying. It's not just that automating white-collar work will be technically possible. It's going to be economically irresistible. Let that hit hard. We live in a capitalist world, and in capitalism, when something dramatically cuts costs and boosts efficiency, it doesn't just get tested, it gets adopted at lightning speed. Just look at Microsoft, recently laid off 3% of its entire workforce, many of them software engineers who helped build the very AI systems now replacing them. The irony? Crushing. And corporations don't care. Their job isn't to be sentimental, it's to maximize profit and stay ahead in an unforgiving race. This isn't some far-off future. It's already starting with software development leading the charge. But make no mistake, it won't stop there. Next, analysts, accountants, HR, consultants, marketers, managers, even executives. AI doesn't sleep. It doesn't take coffee breaks. It scales instantly. Once the ROI is undeniable, every company on Earth will follow suit, because if they don't, they'll be outcompeted into oblivion. Most people still think this is decades away. But the people inside the tech say otherwise. It's coming faster than we think, and we are nowhere near ready. In the next clip, futurist Peter Diamandis and Data Stacks founder David Blunden go even deeper. They argue that this shift will be more disruptive than anything we've seen before, and the timeline leaves us almost no time to prepare. Whether it hits in two years, five years, or ten, when you're talking about retraining millions of workers, that's barely any time at all. 2029 to 2030, one might sound distant, but in human systems terms, it's practically tomorrow. All right, let's hear what Diamandis and Blunden have to say. 2029 to 2031, the end of white collar work. Uh, I believe that, you know, and this is an argument I have with a lot of people. Uh, what will it not be able to do? Uh, I don't see any job that, you know, that at this point we're talking about advanced super intelligence. Uh, do you, do you think this is true that we're going to start um, to see the end of all white collar work by that point? The, the thing that's driving me nuts about this is that, that that's the end point, you know, figure 2030 is the end point, but it's pretty much a straight line between here and there. Mm -hmm. And so the amount of job dislocation, you know, in 2026, 2027 is going to be like nothing we've ever seen. And I keep telling all the CEOs, you're way under planning. You need to look at every single person in your organization, all the individual contributors doing white collar work, and you need to get them to become AI users right now. Yeah. Otherwise, you're condemning them to being sitting ducks and... You're like, well, it's two or three years in the future. Two or th they, they've been working and doing their career planning for 20 years. Yeah, they're stuck. Like, yeah, you've got to get them on the platform now and free up the time for them to learn and put you know, formal education programs uh, in front of them now. Because if you draw a straight line between now and 2030, which is probably more like 2029, 2028, that's only a couple years for people to remap their entire career yeah. path. So you're doing a huge disservice by sticking your head in the sand and ignoring this. Look, I'm not here to scare anyone, but I'll be honest, I'm worried. And it's not just me. If we're truly on track to automate nearly all white-collar work by 2027 or even 2030, then the next few years won't be business as usual. The shift is already starting, especially in places like Silicon Valley, where layoffs are hitting harder than ever, and AI isn't just a tool anymore, it's a replacement. So what happens to everyone who spent their whole lives training for a career that might not exist in five years? Accountants, data analysts, 
software engineers, consultants, the list goes on. And what about those who haven't even started their careers yet? What do they study? What jobs should they aim for? Is there any path left that's actually safe? Right now, the best advice seems to be, get comfortable with AI. Learn how to use these tools. Understand what they can and can't do. Stay ahead of the curve, not because it'll guarantee your job stays safe, but because at least you won't be blindsided when the wave hits. Now I've been reading through the comments from my last video, the AI future no one wants to talk about, which, by the way, absolutely exploded. Thank you all so much for engaging. And one point came up again and again. If companies replace humans with AI, who's going to buy their products? It's a legit question. If millions lose their jobs, how does our economy keep spinning? How do consumers consume if they don't have income? Here's the cold truth. Tech companies aren't thinking about this. They're focused on one thing, profit. If a company cuts half its workforce and somehow becomes more efficient, others will have no choice but to follow just to survive. That's the game. Ruthless, fast-moving, winner-takes-all capitalism. I still believe in AI's potential. I think it can be one of the most transformative forces in human history, in medicine, science, education, creativity. The list is endless. But I also know that the next few years are going to be chaotic, unsettling, possibly even destabilizing. And I'm not alone in feeling this uncertainty. And after everything I've seen and heard from the people building this tech, I agree with them. We are not ready for what's coming. So the least we can do is not walk into it blind. If this hit close to home, drop your thoughts below. I want to hear what you're thinking, what you're afraid of, and how you're preparing or not. And if you want to stay ahead of the AI revolution and understand the stuff most people still aren't even talking about, make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.